Hey guys, it's Cody, back on the Barndo Channel, episode three of the 1845 Way. Here in Hallsville, Texas, we're gonna check out our latest build we have going on. We saw the concrete, we saw the steel framing. Today, we're gonna talk about wood framing. How we tie it in, why we tie it in a certain way, how we frame a certain way. So lots of good stuff to show you. Have a special guest with us. So let's head on inside and check it out. Thanks again for joining us. Today we're here with Lloyd Mullinex, one of my longtime builders. Known Lloyd a long time. We actually went to high school together. I look a lot older than Lloyd is. That's just because when you own a business, it makes you really gray headed. But Lloyd, I mean, I think you're about two years older than me, but anyway, it's what happens. <laughs> Lloyd has been a builder for me a long time. Lloyd's got lots of years of experience actually building. So he's been a, a crucial um, add to our team the last few years. Really appreciate him. We have a lot of questions a lot of times, Lloyd, about how we frame what we do. So a lot of the builds that are barn dominiums are fully wood framed like a pole barn. They are a hybrid. This is a fully steel metal building with a wood frame interior. So how do you tie it in together? How do you tie the steel to the wood? What do you do in the ceilings? So we're gonna talk about that today and, and see why we do it the way we do it. So people know going forward, how we do it the 1845 way. So Lloyd, when you start wood framing a home, what's the first thing that you do that's maybe different than a traditional stick and brick? What do you do different here versus uh, another route? So really you're going to, to frame the interior walls the same as you would on a normal house. Okay. It's just going to be how you tie it in oh. to the steel structure that, that's different. Well, let's look at a few things that are different. First of all, let's talk about how they're tied into the steel. So Lloyd, this is a traditional wood frame wall two by four studs. It's off the wall a little bit, off the steel. So we're actually not inside the steel. We're attaching it on the outside. A lot of people ask me, Cody, how do you tie it in? They wanna know how do we tie the wood to the steel? Show me a little bit about that. Sure, so our wood structure is not actually load bearing. Okay. So there's a couple of different ways. This particular way, they decided to cut blocking. It's screwed to the wall girt and then it is nailed on the sides to the studs and it's nice and rigid. Another way is you can cut a two by four, lay it in here on top of the wall girt, fasten it down the same way, you screw it, and then you can still attach the studs from out here to that and you still get the same rigidness. I would imagine you'd use different ways for different reasons. So maybe if the wall's taller, if it's a thicker wall, you might want to use more blocking. So there's not a magic way of do it the same way every single time because it's all, I would imagine, would That's be correct. dependent on the size. This build is not very big. That is it's correct. 1150 yeah. feet. So this one probably doesn't require as much blocking as others, but I understand the reason behind that. Yes, everyone's going to be different. Yeah. So again, traditional wall there. So let's talk about one of my favorite subjects is how we tie in the roof. I see a lot of Barndo builders, and I use that in quotations because I come from the background of structural steel. I've done that a lot longer than I've built homes. I've built homes since 07, a long time, but I've always been a true believer on not using the metal structure as an actual support. So if you look up top here, we're using a traditional, this is a two by eight, I think, for our trusses, plus your double two by 12s there. Why don't we tie directly to the bottom of the purlin? It would save a ton of money, but I'll tell you what, I don't like it. You can give your opinion on that and, and how this is a little more costly than tying it to the bottom of the purlin, but why we do that. The reason we wouldn't tie it to the bottom, it's just an unnecessary amount of load to the roof structure, right? And, and we don't want that. So one, one thing that I've learned through time, metal buildings and homes are designed to flex a little bit. So if you tie your drywall or something else up to the bottom of the purlin, you get a heavy snow or heavy wind, it may move a little bit. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. And if all of your structure's tied to that, then you're probably gonna have an issue with the drywall. So the way we do it, as you can kind of see, is we do almost like a traditional framing. It's still not load bearing, but it's a very stout way of doing it. You talked about to me earlier about the hog troughs and why we use those. Again, going above and beyond on how we do our design. So where do we put those? Why do we use that particular kind? Why is that the design that we use on this run? Even though it's not that large, why would we do that? We like to try to put the hog trough roughly the center or close to it of the ceiling joists. And what it does is it keeps the ceiling joists from rolling over over time, which like you touched on just a second ago, yeah. can give you problems with your sheetrock yeah. later on. Yeah, so more stable. The sheetrock guys like you better so they're not rolling as much. 
So it's just more bracing, extra framing that we do to try to make sure the best product available is what we're doing, right? Absolutely. Okay, good. So let's head over here. Let's talk about this one wall here. When I walked in and saw this, I was really curious because this build is not that big. Why do we have a double wall here? So we talked through it, looked at the plans and you made it pretty obvious why it makes sense. So this is an interior wall. This is the kitchen, not a large area there too. So why in the world did we double frame this wall instead of saving the customer money or doing something to save us money in the framing? So why do we do a double wall here? Sure, so in this instance, the range is up against an interior wall okay. and not the exterior. Okay. And so we have to have room for the, for the ducting and the venting for the vent hood. Okay. And so if we were on the exterior wall, we have plenty of room there, but when it's on the interior, you either have to double frame yep. or you have to have a two by six or a two by eight wall to be able to allow enough spacing. Right, so it makes a lot of sense to me. Again, just trying to make sure we get the customer what they need. You probably could fit a smaller duck in there, but we wanna make sure we think through every part of the process. So this is a small part of it, but ultimately it's, it's a better case for the customer. All right, Lloyd, so another point that you actually mentioned to me is this is a interior door. Pretty normal design there. You have your header, your two by fours there, but something hasn't been finished with this yet. We're almost done with wood framing here, but what's the steps that we did maybe that is important to follow as opposed to assuming you put it without the bottom? Sure. So to do it the right way, you're gonna to want to run your bottom plate all the way through the doorway. Okay. And you go back when it's finished, and I'll show you one in a moment, and you'll go back and cut them out at the end. And the reason for us doing that, Cody, is it's going to help you keep this section of the wall straight with this section of the wall. Gotcha. When you do it in two separate pieces, they may not line up perfect. Okay. So again, not just for the framing, but helping out the sturdiness of the wall, helping out the next trade, all that other stuff. So there you have just a normal plate that's been cut, not removed yet. So let's walk over here and look at it. This one actually here has been cut. It actually is complete. So that's a, a good reference point there too. So another good point. So is this every wall interior that we do that or just certain ones? Is it exterior as well? Or, or how do you like to do that? We, we do it on every single wall. Okay. It just ensures that all of your walls are straight and in line. So the last part of this build I wanna talk about of the wood framing phase here in the 1845 way, why we do it, how we do it, is talk about the exterior wall. So I know you could just put the wall plate down and just go the to town essentially with a the framing there, but we do something a little bit different for a couple of good reasons. So let's talk about that for a second. Show me before this wall plate goes down, what we do first. Sure, Cody. We've got a product here, it's Comfort Seal. Okay. We buy the one that has several different widths. We get the one that would work with the two by four wall. We can get it wider if we have a two by six wall. Okay. And it's as easy as just rolling it out. You take a slap stapler, you staple it to the bottom of the wall, and you stand it up. So what's the purpose of that? Well, we just want to take every precaution that we can, mm -hmm. and it's just an, an extra barrier from any type of water, whether it be from the outside, the inside, if there was ever a plumbing leak or anything, it can just help to contain water yeah. from, from moving too far. Yeah, and that's why whenever we do these things, they don't seem like big items. They're not very expensive items, but what they are is to make sure every detail of your home is done the right way, not just through science or through things we've learned. It's just through years and years of experience. We have Lloyd here again with years of experience. I've done it a long time. Lots of building experience here. We do it to make sure you have the best home you can. So whether you're building with us or even you're in an area that we don't even serve, make sure your builder or yourself does everything the right way, the 1845 way.